Every year, the Six County Association of Governments does what they call a congressional ride, where they invite staff members from, uh, from our, our Washington delegation to come and ride in one of the six county areas and look at some of these issues. We're dealing with federal issues, state issues, get them out there to see what it is. It's one thing to sit in your office in Washington, D.C. It's another thing to be on the ground and actually live it and breathe it. I hope my political career is a little cleaner than my pants today. <laughs> Muddy clothes are par for the course on your average autumn ATV ride. But for men and women more accustomed to the mudslinging of politics than what you'll find on the trail, today has been eye-opening. Nine Utah legislators, along with staff and guides, are exploring public lands outside of Fairview, Utah on Highway 89 in an attempt to gain a new appreciation for the recreational opportunities that exist in the Beehive State. Led by Representative Spencer Cox, the lawmakers are given a tour of the OHV trails that so many locals and visitors alike have come to see as a part of their western heritage. Fairview Canyon and the Skyline Drive, where the state leaders set out, are world-famous snowmobile playgrounds during the winter, but less well-known as ATV and dirt bike destinations. Just because the snow is yet to fall doesn't mean these lands are any less of an adventure. And this trail, we started at the parking lot North Skyline Drive, uh, which, is, which is just a beautiful area. Went down past what we call Benches Pond, and then take the cut-up road up, and we took a, there's a Forest Service trail, and an amazing trail, a little bit technical, lots of mud today, we've had rain, and took that trail down to, uh, to Huntington Reservoir. And it was fun to go down there to show them uh, kind of a, a different uh, backwoods trail, trail winds through the trees, uh, just some really, really cool terrain there. Here in Sampe County, I mean, you're 45 minutes from downtown Provo, so it's really not that far off the Wasatch Front. I always joke with the governor, I say, you know, uh, Salt, Lake, Salt Lake City is the best place in the world to do business because you can drive an hour and no longer be in Salt Lake City. You know, being able to come up here into the outdoors and, and uh, take in the fall colors right now, coming in the trails are well maintained and I mean, it's, it's a fantastic opportunity to be out here. Those opportunities have come under attack in the last decade as the idea of conservation has slowly become synonymous with land closure, protection with a closed gate. Utah's large tracts of public land are seen as an American treasure, but the debate on how best to preserve them rages on. Today is about opening the eyes of lawmakers, helping them see the value of public land access. I don't think any of them need any convincing. I think they all believe the importance of access to trails and understand the importance of it. They may come from the city, but deep down I think they're okay. It's a situation when you're driving out there on the trails and you, you see some of the forests in particular that are not doing well. It's pretty obvious that the state uh, needs to be able to take control and manage it and have access to it. Be able to provide a better experience not only for those that recreate, but for those that just want to come out and hunt and fish and you know, enjoy, enjoy the, the beautiful scenery that we have here. We talk about these issues, and you can talk until you're blue in the face, but uh, you know, if a picture's worth a, a thousand words, then being out there is worth, worth a million. And seeing, seeing the landscape, seeing the importance of the access, and, and some of the problems that come along with that, I think uh, really helped out. The ride moves through mountain and cloud as the legislators gaze firsthand at the splendor of the area while navigating some tricky terrain. Getting the ride organized was a challenge in and of itself, well, with having to supply machines for all of the lawmakers and staff. We knew we wanted to get uh, legislators here. We wanted to get them on the mountain. We wanted to get them on the trails. And so I talked to the local Polaris dealer, uh, who I know very well, and chatted with them and said, hey, we'd like to rent some machines maybe, get these guys out here. Can we do that? Got a call back and said, Polaris is in the area. They've got their truck full of product. They would love to do this. They're, they're always advocating for trails and the things we're doing here on, the, on this mountain. And they said, we'd love to come and, and meet you there and, and help you out. So it really worked out well for us. With the Polaris ATVs and side-by-sides out on the trails of Fairview, these public servants have been able to leave behind the stress and egos of Capitol Hill, trading them for a day in the outdoors, just like everyone else that has ever climbed on a quad and set their sights on a lofty peak. The public lands debate will continue, but now as lawmakers are faced with mounting pressure to shut down recreation of all types, these men and women will look at the issue not in the abstract, but with the memories of an enjoyable day in the backcountry of the West. If you were predisposed not to enjoying it, being out here on the trails in a recreational vehicle or an ATV, I don't know how you couldn't be moved by what you saw. I mean, there's 
It's incredible, right? Lakes everywhere, well-maintained trails. Today I hope we highlighted the importance of keeping it open, keeping the access open, and getting out here and seeing the resource that we have. You gotta get on the wheels to get out here. You can't hike to the top of the skyline and back. You've gotta access it and there's, you know, we've been responsible with the way we've done it. We've got roads, let's keep them open. For At Your Leisure, I'm Stephen Human.